Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Ethan, it's Friday night. It's Friday night. It's Friday Night Flies. Um, I've got a pretty killer pattern for you tonight. Um, it's called the Psych Minnow. Uh, this fly, uh, I gotta admit, I'm I'm ha I'm like super stoked with uh, it. It basically takes all the fishy features of a salmon fry, mashes them all into one, and you come out with this. Looks a so, little bit like the Moto Minnow. It looks a lot like the Moto Minnow. I've got a few uh, different changes. Obviously, it's tied on a tube fly tonight, so uh, I should have started tying tube flies a long time ago. What I like about them is you can adjust uh, how how big they are, so they're usually tied for uh, intruders or streamers. Uh, they, I, I really like tube flies, I learned. Um, so instead of uh, sort of the part of the body, I've got um, orange... Uh, schlappen. Um, That'd I got, be a great coho fly, man. And you know what? I know. I'm excited. I want to try it for coho. We've got a new feature with the, uh, the broadcast system that we got. So at the end of the show, we're going to show you a little uh, little update as to how we can put these flies to work with the feminine fish finder. And uh, we'll show you a little video of some fish that are going to be caught with this kind of fly right here. So anyhow, let's uh, we'll go down to the bottom there. Give it a slow roll. Okay, and, uh, sounds good. Us. Some of your attributes here, you got a cone head. I got a cone head, so I'm tying it on a two fly, obviously. Got a cone head, I got a golden cone head, so a lot of these features come from the Moto Minnow. I've got a little bit thicker of a body for such as this time of the year in Pemberton, maybe a couple weeks earlier uh, as well. It was, um, it was a little bit, um, the salmon fry are fully grown by that point, so they're really thick. Basically, big, thick, bushy flies are killing it. Um, I've got the mallard flank for the gills, as well as I put some saddle hackle as well. So I'm going to be using a longer saddle hackle. I just picked a bad piece there. And when this flies in the water, it really looks sort of shrimpy and mixed with um, salmon fry. So let's get started. Okay, so first off, before I start tying, uh, I wanted to point out that I flared the end of this tube so that the cone head obviously doesn't fall off for those of you who are just wanting to start to learn how to tube tie. As well as I've got aluminum tube. So I've got my regular tube that goes through the aluminum tube. This just makes it when I wrap down, I'm not cinching the tube to the pin a little bit easier a little bit nicer when tying that you don't have to try and rip your fly off okay so I'm gonna start out with some white six aught super fly this stuff is awesome now you can see I've already wrapped this thing on there I thought I was gonna do a quick one before but I was able to find one that I'd already done now I warn you when this fly is done, it's not going to look exactly the same. I have tested that fly out in a big swimming tank. So uh, when it dries and when it's swimming, it looks like what I showed you, which is really nice. But when we're done with it, it's not going to look exactly like that. Now I've got my white strung marabou. This is really good stuff for tails. Anything that's gonna make a salmon fry a salmon fry okay now I want this tail to be about the same length as the tube maybe a little bit shorter the nice part about tube flying as well is that you can swap out your hook depending on uh, what you're fishing for as well as um, you can adjust the way it sits in the water as well. So if you're fishing like a lake or a really uh, deep river, such as the Lillooet or anything like that here in Pemberton, or sorry, Lillooet, I guess, 
uh, you can have it riding the hook riding down but if you're fishing a shallower river you can be fishing it with um, the hook facing up the actual hook point facing up which is really useful to me and it will make it swim a little bit differently as well okay so now that we got our white marabou in there I'm going to take some orange schlappen it's always a funny word to me schlappen um, schlappen those fish slapping them funny um okay let me just pick a nice one here okay there we go just put all that right there that's two feathers Maybe you guys it in the back. okay there we go so that's my orange slapping if you guys have never seen it before I'm just gonna peel off that fuzzy sort of marabou looking stuff. Trim that. By the way, if Dr. Slick or any or Solarez has been watching the videos, I've been using your products steadily. So I really enjoyed them. Just wanna say thank you. Tie that in. Trim the tag. Okay. Now, for my body, I'm not using dubbing like, um, let's say, Brad or even my uh, Moto Minnow. I am using uh, Crystal Chenille Medium. Uh, I find this stuff is pretty fast. doesn't take super long. When I cut it, I usually like around two and a half the length of the shank or the tube, I guess. It's weird calling it the tube still gonna give her a quick whip finish use the nice rotary feature of this mongoose just gonna wrap that through now again when this fly is sitting in the water it's really really nice when it's it's not super appealing to the eyes, you gotta admit. I when I first tied this, I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Uh, but then I put it. I have a swimming tank at home. I like to test some of my flies in when I can't get out to the lake or river, and it's um, yeah, it's it looks really good. So I like to just. Give her a little bit of a spin. That helps lock her in place. There we go. I gotta admit, I was trying to think of something I could use this stuff for. Okay, so now we got that. Now we're gonna use some of our schlappen. Now I like sort of thicker more closely wraps right so you can already see how it's looking it's not super eye appealing but as soon as it gets into that water it likes to just straighten back and just act as part of the fish I also like the orange schlappen because it gives it sort of like a hot spot slash um, hot spot slash um, really ties the fish together, I guess is the word. Okay. Oh, there we go. So if you guys have never tied a streamer pattern or fish with a streamer, I highly suggest it during your salmon runs and cutthroat runs. Uh, the once you catch a, fl a fish on a fly, a streamer fly, you're gonna be like, holy crap! Dry fly is like none, anything that you've ever experienced. Okay, wrap that back a little bit, get a little bit more space, right? So when this is in the water, it's just gonna all straighten back, and it's gonna look beautiful. Now I've got some mallard flank I 
And when I'm done this fly, I'm just, when I'm actually done this fly, I'm going to give it like a nice uh, scraping or rub with um, my brush or, um, oh man, yeah, Velcro. And that that's just going to basically break up all this uh, all this mallard flank, uh, all the schlap and everything. So I'm just gonna tie that in, and get a hold of it. You can tie it in from the top as well. The only reason I'm not doing that is because I don't like hafting to try and tie in tiny pieces that might break, especially on camera. If any of you guys have tried tying in front of a camera, it's a little bit nerve-wracking. Right, so you can see it started to clump there. So as soon as we sort of brush that out, it's going to be a lot nicer. Again, these with these gills, or this is representing sort of the gills. So actually, I'm just gonna give that a quick whip finish, or no, I don't need to. I'm just gonna take my brush, just sort of brush it out a little bit. Split it apart. There we go. Um, hmm. That's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to add in some white saddle hackle. This is going to bring the gills and everything together. Speaking of which, I have to get more of today. And again, I'm just going to do the same thing with my schlappen. Now, with the Moto Minnow, you're, you usually have saddle hackle for the ribbing or the body, whatever you prefer to call it. Um, yeah, I, I just decided to try schlappen and it turned out to be a killer, really fills in the body really sort of distinguishes this fly a little bit more. Just going to wrap that down. A nice part about the tube fly as well is that it doesn't it doesn't like to like if you're going to break something, you're not going to break the tube fly. You're most likely going to break the hook or you're going to break anything else because as soon as that fish grabs it this fly pops off and goes up your tippet or your leader and it makes it a lot nicer a lot easier to not have to retie a new fly each time you break that hook or break the fly I guess I'm gonna tie this off now just wrapping it around that hackle and then this I find just sort of grabs it really nicely if you've never seen this sort of technique. Here we go. Now I'm just going to grab this, pull it back. Sorry about the background noise, we're still open here at Spud Valley Sporting Goods, downtown Pemberton. Okay, so now I've got everything tied back. So you can already see that schlappen's getting pulled back to the back of the fly. It's starting to really distinguish it. Now I'm just going to put a little hot spot in, or what this also represents is um, bleeding gills when I brush it out. Um, so I, I really just want to pack it in behind this uh, cone head, lots of it. Yeah, so this is just going to represent a bleeding fly or a bleeding uh, fish 
wounded fish. It's going to represent their gills. Wounded, basically anything a predatory fish is looking for. It also catches their eye, as well as the schlappen. And this, this would be a great coho fly, especially for those bigger fish. Chum, coho. Chum, coho, anything. Um, I'm actually a little bit tempted to tie it, try it during the pink season this year, um, just because it's got that hot spot. There we go. I just whip finish this guy off. There we go. So there's the psych minnow. Uh, pretty, pretty easy streamer, if you ask me. Um, it's uh, effective. Yeah, it's a fun little fly to tie. Give her a nice slow roll there, bud. Sure will. That's a beauty, buddy. Now again, I would have, if I did this fly again, I would have brushed the. Uh, the mallard flank out a little bit more uh, when I'm actually wrapping it so that uh, it wouldn't have clumped as much, but this still works. Perfect. Okay, we'll go up top here. Um, and then what we're going to do here in about two seconds. Two seconds. I don't know why we don't have the uh, top camera working. Anyhow, it's not working, so. Top camera is not working, some technical difficulties. So anyhow, what we've got here is uh, the Pemberton Fish Finder. Um, that's our website. You can see it up here, PembertonFishFinder.com. And where we would typically use this is in the Squamish area. You can see there's a beautiful coho. There's Scott with the happy clients in their pink salmon that they caught. Some chum salmon, some more pinks. Steel had beautiful stuff, and then uh, down here we got a quick video if you guys want to quick watch this. If not, this is us tying some flies for uh, the local Getting waters. ready for another great day on the Squamish River. Scotty Holder, your host, FridayNightFlies.com. Scotty, what are we doing today? Oh, look at this we video. are uh, I don't know what tying some. Chrome bullet the catchers here. Pattern, what do you think? Uh, we're out on the Squamish River. Yeah, Didn't know we were doing a video right now. So chum. Tongue tied. Tip, uh, but uh, we're going out for chum, coho salmon in the Squamish area. This gives you a sample of what we do. Right there. Look at it. That's the ticket. That's it a killer fly right there. there. Beautiful. That's the SSG. Let's see what we catch with these beauties. All right, so we got what? October. We're in a honey hole. We're in a honey hole. In an undisclosed location. Yeah, Zipper Mall Valley here. Yeah. Squamish River. <laughs> Fishing for chum and coho. We'll give you that we're in Squamish. How about that? Yeah, we're, we're in Pemberton's next door neighbor. Taming a few of these Squamish fish. These things are quite cool. Woo! Gotta love that, eh? Yeah. So, uh, I think what? You brought them in twice? This will be number three. How's the forearm? Oh, I got a good burn on this. Uh, <laughs> Our clients definitely wouldn't like this. No. No, especially with that little secret weapon you got on the end of the line. Nah. You gotta come on tour, then you get to see what we're using. I got a feeling when we get this in, they're gonna see what it is anyhow. Yeah. It'll be pretty evident. Woo. We'll be back with a fish, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we're recording again. Beautiful chum. Jump, jump, jump. We're truly spoiled here where we fish. Sure are. Yeah, we're gonna get right back at her. My arm is done. Okay.
Hi right, Scotty, as usual, you always gotta outdo me, bud. Hey, I was fishing. You gotta huh? teach the teacher what's up for a while. <laughs> There's no truth in that. There's no truth in that. You got you got one that makes mine look like a baby. But yeah, I was upstream a little bit. I didn't get too much of your fight, sorry, but hey the main thing is we're gonna get a picture of this big freaking thing you got, man. Yeah, we're just running single hand eight weights. And uh, it's been a lot of fun today. We've got a lot of fish today, haven't we, Scotty? Yeah. It's been really good. For a late afternoon fishing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> just catching your breath there, bud? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Anyhow, you can see how big that fish is. That thing is, there's chumber jumping all around us. That thing is a monster. I don't even know how big, how big do you think that is? Like 20, 25 pounds? Here, I'll give you a hand. I'll put this thing away and I'll be right back. Right back to you. Hopefully we don't lose it in the transition here, but uh, hopefully we get a picture of it. <laughs> Got a big chum, chum, chum. Oh, buddy, that thing is a beast. Let's see a close up here. Beautiful uh, fish, Scotty. Yeah, smile. You're on camera, smile, big fella. Okay, let's get the release on this thing. Here, there he goes. And the release. Off he goes. Beautiful, man. Let's see a, th let's see a thumbs up, bud. Woo. There it is. Oh, I can can't. Oh, I can't. You're gonna have to get your wife to open your jar of jam in the morning, bud. <laughs> oh, I always like it when the video starts and the fish is thrashing in the water. And the bigger man's giggling. Big, big chum. And then we got Rick down the way. It's getting low light, so you can't really see that bent rod on Rick's, but it's there. Pop off, Rick. All right. Think I can do one-handed film? Film going. See if we don't uh, drop the phone in the water. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, gotta love it when the water runs up your elbow. Anyhow, let me get this guy back. Bye. Go do your breathing, bud. Woo! Alright, bring that music back. <laughs> So, um, I'm not sure if we got, anyhow, that's our YouTube channel. You guys can check that out later. Um, top camera, we'll go back down, poke your head down at the vise there. <laughs> our top camera's not working for some uncertain reason, but we'll get that figured out between shows here. Uh, say a quick goodnight. All right, good night. Okay, good night. <laughs> All right, buddy. All See right, ya. guys. Uh, Scott's up next here, and uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes.